Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R330 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly load and configure the system. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, this is a 1U chassis. There's uh, two types of storage options. There's an 8-bay small form factor like this chassis right here, or there's a 4-bay large form factor. Really kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a storage server and you're trying to get a, a bunch of uh, terabytes in there at a cheaper price point as you can, I recommend the large form factor. It is going to be uh, much cheaper to buy say like a four terabyte or eight terabyte large form factor than it would be for a small form factor. Uh, if you're looking to just throw some SSDs in, personally, I'd recommend going the small form factor route because then you can uh, have more slots to you know upgrade in the future. So it just really depends on what you're looking for. As far as the CPUs are concerned, there's one CPU socket. It's an LGA1151 socket, which means it uses Intel Xeon E3 1200 V5 or V6 series processors. Technically, you can also use Intel Pentium, Intel Celeron, or Intel Core i3 processors, but what do we truly recommend is using the Intel Xeon uh, E3 series, uh, whether it's the V5 or V6, that's personally what we recommend and what we see most of our customers going with as well. Um, and, and people ask me, hey, what CPU do you recommend? And really, it, it always depends on what your application is, but what we've seen to be very popular is the uh, E3 1225 V5, the E3 1230 V5, the E3 V6, and um, there's a number of really, really good processors in this series as a whole, but uh, that is uh, just a couple of the, the lower end ones that we see quite a bit that people like to build with. Uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, there are four DIMM slots inside. It uses DDR4 memory. You can use a number of different speeds. You can use as low as 2133, 2400, or up to 2666. I will note that if you put in 2666, it's going to clock down to 2400, uh, so there's really no you know extra value unless you just have it laying around you don't have to go buy extra memory uh, really then if I always tell people if you're buying right now uh, don't spend extra money and just buy the 2400 because the 2066 will clock down uh, as far as the sizes are concerned you can use a 4 gig 8 gig or 16 gig no unfortunately you can't use 32 gig and no you can't use 64 gig it sure would be nice since there's only four slots uh, but you can only use a 16 gig dim and that brings us to what type of memory can we use unfortunately there's only one type of memory and that's ECC unbuffered server memory no you cannot use uh, ECC ECC registered and no, you cannot use load reduced memory. Uh, ECC and buffered is the only type of memory, which uh, is unfortunate because ECC and buffered is a little bit uh, more special. It's harder to get. Um, it's not as readily available and on a price per gigabyte, it's a little bit more expensive, uh, but that is what you can use in this machine. Um, so that means the max that you can do is 64 gigabytes using four 16 gigs at 2400 megahertz. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the machine, uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show you the, uh, the channels, how to actually load the DIMMs, a couple of tricks along the way. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear because you really never wanna be inside your machine without some sort of protection, so I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, just make sure your latch is set to unlock. Pop the tab and lift it open pretty much like any server you've ever been in. So a couple things we'll note before we really get into uh, uh, the uh, RAM installation here is that, um, you know, you got your back plane here. Uh, you have all your connections. You have your fans. You have your intrusion detection switch. Over here, you got two hot swap power supplies. Uh, you have your uh, riser for your PCI slots. Uh, you have uh, your air baffle here, which is uh, nice because it's going to show you, you know, one CPU and it has the uh, slots labeled. So uh, A1 is actually in the middle, and A2 is on the outside. Then come back to A3 and A4. Uh, if you can't see it on camera, it is labeled on the air baffle and labeled on the motherboard. So Dell has made it very convenient for for you to do your upgrades at home. So, um, all right, so you're gonna wanna grab your air baffle and just lift it straight up. It's not connected to anything, so it's pretty easy to do. Um, and then as we discussed, you wanna pay attention to your to your memory channels. So let's just say, for instance, you were only putting in two DIMMs in this machine. You're gonna wanna put them into A1 and A2, which this white slot right here that I'm gonna pop is A1, and this is 
A2, okay? So the black ones are gonna be A3 and A4. Uh, so if you're only putting two in, you're gonna put them in the two white slots, A1 and A2. And people ask, well, why would we do that? I mean, it's really just simple. You wanna make sure you are maximizing your overall performance uh, by having an even balance across both your memory channels. You wouldn't wanna put them in, just, just say like uh, A3 and A1, which are the two closest slots, which some people might just do it because they're the closest. Uh, you're not actually gonna get the uh, the max performance there, so you're gonna wanna put them in the two white dim slots. Now, personally, for a machine like this that only has four slots, I honestly would recommend throwing in four 16 gigs, max it out, get all 64 gigs out of it, and get the max performance. Um, and I'll show you how to do that here. And if you're looking to install uh, or get an upgrade for your machine, I'd ask, hey, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. We have a ton of different uh, eight gigs and 16 gig options for this machine, uh, different speeds, and would love to uh, the opportunity to quote you guys. So, uh, all right, so I'm gonna show you a couple tricks before we do install, okay? So first thing first, on the module itself, there is a notch in the middle here, this key. This key is important because it's not perfectly centered. So when you go to install your module, if you have it facing the wrong way, you could damage the, the, uh, the leads on the DIMM or you could damage the module itself, neither of which you want to do because uh, that means you could potentially have to replace the motherboard, which is a, an expensive uh, user error. So that's one of the things I always just say, make sure you line it up properly, okay? And then you're going to want to go ahead and uh, put it in here. And the other thing I always like to say is I always make sure all my dim slots are open. Uh, you don't want the uh, the tabs fighting you as you're putting it in. Uh, so just something real simple as that. And again, these, these are things you have to do. Uh, they're just things that we like to do for safety sakes because our goal here is to protect the parts, protect the machine, uh, make sure that you have an easy and smooth install that doesn't lead to any other issues, right? So that's our goal. So if it takes an extra minute or two, that's no big deal. All right, so now you'll see I've installed the module. It's sitting here. It's on the slot itself but it's actually not technically installed. Uh, you'll notice it's not fully inserted. Um, and this is a common user error where someone will think they've inserted a module all the way, but they actually haven't. And uh, when they go to boot it up, it says they have a bad dim or a bad dim slot. And half the time, it's it's just really a, um, a user error of you need to make sure you have it fully inserted. And this is how you do it. You hear these two clicks? Those two clicks let you know that it's uh, fully inserted and these tabs are not jetting out. So you'll see how this black tab is sticking out and the white tab is in. That's how you know that the module is fully inserted. Okay, so now we're gonna come out here to A2. So again, not everyone's maxing it out. So if you weren't maxing out and you're only putting two dims, these two slots right here, those are the slots you wanna do. But again, like I said, I would personally recommend just going ahead and maxing it out. So this right here actually is A3. And then we're gonna go ahead and do A4. So another thing I'd also like to note, you'll notice that uh, we used all matching modules, uh, our kit's the exact same, uh, nothing is mixed, there's not different brands, different speeds, different whatever. I personally recommend always having just a, a matching kit. Anything that comes from uh, Cloud Ninjas is always gonna be a matching kit because you know, to us that's really important to just make sure that you, you don't have any issues on performance or different CAS latencies or anything like that. Just everything nice and even, nice and smooth. So, all right, another thing I like to do afterwards is I check all the tabs just make sure that they are fully in, and they are, and we're good. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our air baffle back on. So we're just gonna wanna line everything up, and you'll see that they're lined up with the fans here. Put it in, and it'll just drop down nice and smooth. And we'll put our top back on, and we'll call it a day. So hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. Take care.